Hello again, everyone. It's Greg with a follow-up report on our solar panels. Now, I previously had talked about how we had a, a solar panel system installed over a year ago, and then when we realized we actually wanted to use more electricity than it was designed to provide for us, we expanded the system, and actually what we did was we got a, a, a separate system uh, installed, which is also tied into the grid. So here is our new inverter for the, for the eight additional solar panels. It has its own hard, uh, heavy-duty cutoff switch here. And then over here in this box, they've also installed um, more circuit breakers. So we have the original set of circuit breakers for the first set of solar panels and a new circuit breaker for the new set of solar panels. They also beefed up our main breaker switch here that cuts off the entire house in case of, uh, for whatever reason, you would want to do that. So, the day that the new panels were installed, it was a cloudy day, and it actually started raining just as they were finishing up the job. And it was one of those days where, I mean, you can have a, a rainy day, and it's, it's cloudy, but it's, it's not super dark, but it's rainy. This was one of those days where it was rainy, and it was dark, just dark skies and rain all day long. So, I figured uh, that was about two weeks ago. Typically, that time of year, I think that this first set of solar panels that we had installed could have generated about 18 kilowatt hours for, for, for a day like that if it had been a completely sunny day uh, for that time of year. But being such a dark, cloudy day, it actually only generated 3 kilowatt hours that whole day. Now, the second system, we weren't allowed to turn it on right away, but about a week later, they told us it was okay to turn it on. And as expected, this one generates somewhere in the neighborhood of 30% of what the other system generates. Um, it, it's a little bit more, actually, sometimes because, well, uh, in the afternoon, when the larger system is doing most of its generating, there's a large shadow from a tree next door, whereas these panels are on the opposite side of the house, uh, tilted towards the east, so they're not as affected by the tree shadow in the afternoon because they've already done the, the majority of their generating by then. But I've, I've been keeping track of the numbers and watching it, and I think I'm pretty confident that uh, over the course of the year it'll even out. And in fact, as the system was designed to do, I'm anticipating this will generate about 30% of what this larger system can do over the course of a year. Also, because the, the new panels are all tilted towards the east, and most of the older set of panels, uh, those are tilted towards the west. So it also means that um, in, in the morning, if there's more sunshine and in the afternoon there's more clouds, then that the advantage will be on the, the system that's facing eastward, and vice versa, if, if there's more clouds in the morning versus the afternoon, then, um, then this one's going to generate uh, a larger percentage by comparison. But uh, obviously, again, the smaller system is only designed to reach about 30% on average. Uh, I've been keeping track of the numbers, and well, uh, I think I should do a follow-up video to talk about the spreadsheet I created for keeping track of those numbers. I don't really have to do that. Uh, the system is doing what it's supposed to do, and I can look at our monthly bill from the electric company and see how we've interacted with the grid. That's fine. But, um, well, I'm, I'm just more curious about it than that. So I've been, I've been taking readings every day, <laughs> as long as I'm home, not out of town, from the net meter and uh, the, the final uh, daily total from each of these inverters. And I've been keeping track of those, uh, well, now with this first set for over a year. And I'm running the numbers and I'm comparing and I'm anticipating how much electricity we're going to use over time and how much we're going to generate over time. And uh, we'll see how it happens. You don't have to be that, that, <laughs> that much of, I don't want to say micromanager because I'm not really managing it. I'm just, I'm just crunching the numbers. You don't have to crunch the numbers like, like I do. But if you do, um, I'm going to make a follow-up video and talk about the spreadsheet that I made for, for doing that. Now, something that I haven't talked about much in previous videos, but I have mentioned it, is that if there is a power failure on the grid, these things have to turn themselves off. So uh, we, we used to get more frequent power failures around here just because of things like the, uh, the, the, the poles. We've got our own private air show going on here. So we have uh, the power poles 
right along close to the street. I'm in this, in this rural area, so uh, a little bit of distracted driving. Someone could hit a power pole, have a bad accident, and that would, of course, disrupt the, uh, the electricity uh, around the area if it damages the power pole. Well, we used to get that every now and then, and it's still possible, like I said, because of the, the proximity of the power poles to the actual pavement. Uh, you never know when someone who's driving their big cattle truck um, and not used to driving something quite so wide might clip a power pole <laughs> by accident. Uh, those sorts of things happen. And again, even if it happens in the middle of the day on a nice bright sunny day, this, both of these, either of these, <laughs> they have to shut off because well, when you have some sort of repair that's necessary like that, then uh, the power company has to send a lineman out. They got to work on the on the wires and the poles and, and things. And when they do, of course, they don't want live electricity being fed in from from me, <laughs> from from my house. So uh, it just needs to shut off. Um, that's that's one of the things that happens with a grid tied system like we have. Now, I would I would love to have some sort of backup battery type of system, something like an uninterruptible power supply like you'd have for your computer, something like that for the entire house. And there is technology out there at the moment where I could have had something like that, but uh, right now it's it's just expensive. And so that's kind of down the road. I'd love to do something like that. And then uh, we, we could run off backup power and we could probably even access power from our from our panels during a blackout as long as it's only going to our backout uh, backup batteries. I, I'm not sure exactly how that would all be tied together. Uh, some electrician would have to set it up correctly. But in the meantime, uh, the economics of it say that we'll play along with the idea that if the grid is out, we're out as well, and we'll have to find some other way to have backup power until it comes back. It's not a big deal anymore around here. I suppose there could be an earthquake or some other unforeseen disaster, which could uh, make it problematic, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. So we've had a little bit of storminess here and there, clouds here and there, and that, of course, uh, you know, affects our ability to generate electricity through solar panels when that happens. But it was only uh, yesterday, as I'm recording this, that we finally had a day when uh, the first of the season, <laughs> when the solar panels were actually covered with snow. And, uh, of course, when that happens, there's no generation whatsoever. I was very, uh, I was very curious what would happen. I knew that uh, since it was a cloudy and snowy day anyway, that even if the snow hadn't stuck to the panels, our generation wouldn't have been that great. So I tried an experiment because the snow wasn't too deep and it was supposed to be sunny today. And I, and I tried to see how long it would take for the snow to just work itself off naturally, um, melt and slide off and whatever was going to happen so the snow would clear off of the panels. And it happened much more slowly than I wanted it to. Uh, in fact, with the newer panels, I, I went up, I went ahead and I, I, I cleared it off manually <laughs> just because I wanted to see what they could do on a day like today. So we're going to have some, clou uh, some cloudy days, some sunny days coming up, and we'll just see how it all evens out. You don't have to ma micromanage the way I do, but I just love to watch the numbers move as these things uh, generate electricity and send it out there through the grid. Or, of course, maybe we'll just use it directly and not send as much out on the grid because we're just using it here before it goes. All right, that, that's all for now. And like I said, I'll do a follow-up video, talk about spreadsheets and how you can track these numbers and have some fun with numbers if you think that's fun. <laughs> That'll be next time.